Woke Mattel TV boss fired leaves immediately with no replacement. What is it with these female executives? Why do they keep getting thrown out? From Deadline, Mattel mess, Michelle Mendelovitz lawyers up after a sudden exit from Toymaker's TV studio. Michelle had been running Mattel's TV division with a lot of authority and a lot of accountability, but she hadn't even been there a year before they had to get rid of her. We'll get into why in a minute. But she reminds me a lot of other female executives that have been recently thrown out of their companies. For example, from The Hollywood Reporter, shocker, Marvel Studios veteran Victoria Alonso exits. They didn't talk about why she was leaving Marvel. She had been at Marvel for years. But ultimately, the truth came out. Victoria Alonso had been fighting with Kevin Feige, who runs Marvel, for Disney, and Marvel had been going down the tubes. Not just the entertainment content. People didn't like the woke direction of the Marvel movies. But they were also wildly over budget on all of their productions. That was Victoria Alonso's responsibility in many ways. She was dealing with the visual effects people. She was not competent with that. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was released. They didn't even finish the visual effects when the movie was released. But Victoria was more focused on pushing her agenda than taking care of the Marvel brand. For example, and it took a while for this to come out. From the New York Post, Disney pays off fired Marvel executive Victoria Alonso after she allegedly refused to censor pride reference in Ant-Man. Why did Ant-Man need a pride reference in it? How is that going to make Disney more money? It's not. That's why they've gone back and they've started with Deadpool and Wolverine and they're trying to figure out how to make movies that people actually want to see. They pushed her out of the company so fast that at the time, I did predict she'd be paid a lot of money as a settlement. And she was paid a lot of money as a settlement. And they paid her a lot because they literally needed to just get her out of the company no matter what, which they did. And now Marvel's starting to turn around. Also over at Paramount, Another female executive, Nicole Clements led unit, will move under the CBS Studios umbrella. Nicole Clements was the head of Paramount TV. She'd been there for a few years. She had the typical diversity issues, putting their focus where the focus doesn't belong. But Paramount in particular was extraordinary because on a Tuesday, they announced they were closing Paramount TV, their entire office, by the end of that week, by Friday. They didn't bring her over to CBS. They didn't offer her what is very standard, a producer deal. So that when you leave a company, everyone feels good about what happened and there's some money being exchanged and reputations can continue. No, she was completely thrown out. Right now on her LinkedIn, you can see she's an executive producer and she's self-employed. But she doesn't have a deal with Paramount or they would have announced it when she was let go or they certainly would have announced it by now. And that makes it look like Paramount has had enough of Nicole Clemens. And over at Mattel, they don't need the services of Michelle Mendelovitz. And man, is she mad. From Deadline, the sudden departure this week of Michelle Mendelovitz from running Mattel Television Studios looks to indicate the fun and games are over at the Toymaker. And Michelle is an executive that seems to jump around a bit. And I am a little bit surprised. I'm sure they liked her focus and her energy. But I am surprised they gave her such a big position because she hadn't had a position at this level of authority and with this level of responsibility in the past. And also since 2020, she's jumped around in a lot of jobs. In 2020, she led drama development for 20th Century Fox, having jumped over from Apple TV. Then in 2022, only around two years later, she left 20th Century Television. And then it took until November of 2023, where she got the position as head of Mattel Television Studios. With legal action hanging overhead like a sword of Damocles, Mendelovitz has engaged the services of Bare Knuckles attorney Brian Friedman to negotiate her exit from Mattel. A situation that will be headed for the courts. Of course they're going to fight. Of course they're going to scream. And Disney had every right to get rid of Victoria Alonso. But when you throw people out of a company, you're going to be paying them a settlement unless there's some misconduct you can prove. And this isn't the kind of misconduct you can actually prove. 
Whether or not Michelle was pushing a major agenda like Victoria Alonso was doing, we don't know for sure, but we're going to look into some of the details and we're going to look into her boss as well, Enon Kreese. And Enon has really turned around Mattel. He's a serious business executive. He knows what he's doing and he also knows when he can't get work out of people, I'm sure. Perhaps more telling of the way things have been going down at the Enon Kreese run company. Mendelovitz may not be the only top executive on the TV team and elsewhere at Mattel who is heading out the door. There are executives that Michelle put in place. She does know people in Hollywood. How else could she keep jumping in between all of these jobs? However, Hollywood jobs are not exactly easy to get right now. Hollywood is basically like in a depression right now. People are leaving the industry because they can't find jobs. So sure, maybe some of her friends that she put in place will jump ship at the company. Or maybe her replacement will just get rid of them. But no, I would not expect to see a mass exodus of executives because all the people that are leaving Hollywood jobs are getting laid off these days. They're not quitting. But Michelle is a seasoned and well-respected television executive, according to her attorney, commenting on her short tenure at Mattel. Quote, she was hired by Mattel and assembled a high caliber team to build out a preeminent television studio for an otherwise dysfunctional company. Enon Kreis turned around Mattel. He also got the Barbie movie out, which did do quite a bit of money. If not for him, sure, it would be a dysfunctional company. It's not dysfunctional. If she could have done her job, she wouldn't be looking for a new one right now. Her attorney continues, quote, it's unfortunate that certain members of Mattel leadership prevented her from doing her job. She's prepared for legal action, but hopeful that it will not be necessary. Time will tell if others follow. The Mattel executives know they're going to have to pay her off. There's no question about that. It doesn't matter what she did. It doesn't matter what she didn't do. Hollywood executives, no matter how badly they fail, always get cash and usually get cash with a producing deal so they can bring projects into the company, supposedly. Basically, it just funds their overhead and their expenses and their health insurance for any important executive that leaves the company. Both in her attorney's mention of legal action and if others follow, show the seeds of a rapid escalation of this Mattel matter are certainly planted. He's also now currently representing Rebel Wilson in her battle with the debt producers over various allegations. And he's representing X-Men 97 showrunner Bo DeMeo over his surgical exit earlier this year from the Disney Plus animated revival. Friedman, her attorney, also knows how to lob grenades that land with a bang in both boardrooms and with the media. Whether this is a tactic to close a hefty exit package or a pulling back of a shoddy veil at Mattel, only time will tell. There's no shoddy veil at Mattel or you would have heard other stories. This is yet another female executive being tossed out by media companies. I can't say why. A seasoned small screen executive, Mendelovitz joined Mattel in late 2023, not long after the Oscar nominated Barbie proved a box office blockbuster for Warner Brothers. In her role at Mattel, Mendelovitz was designated to oversee and guide the development, production, and distribution of the company's growing slate of episodic content on broadcast and streaming globally. Over her tenure, Mendelovitz reported to Josh Silverman, Chief Franchise Officer of Mattel. In case you were not sure how woke she may or may not be, Mendelovitz, who was Hillary Clinton, yes, that Hillary Clinton's, and Chelsea Clinton's executive producer at Hillary Clinton's Hidden Light Productions Company. Hillary Clinton has her own production company. This woman did work with Hillary Clinton as her executive producer at that company. She also ran drama development for 20th TV and was a senior creative executive for scripted and unscripted programming at Apple before that. From Deadline, Michelle Mendelovitz named head of Mattel Television Studios. Former 20th Television head of drama Michelle Mendelovitz has been tapped to take the reins as head of Mattel Television Studios. In her new role, Mendelovitz will oversee the development, production, and distribution of Mattel's slate of episodic content on broadcast and streaming globally. She reports to Josh Silverman, Chief Franchise Officer of Mattel. And when they include distribution, that means literally making deals 
for the content you're overseeing producing. So you're really running it like a studio head. It's a big responsibility. It also means even if your content is great, completely on brand, and your customers love it, but you don't have the skill set to make those distribution deals, the whole thing falls apart. I've never met this person, and she may be a very talented executive, but not seeing like five years' experience of running something completely independently with those kinds of responsibilities, even something smaller. Being a contributor to something is one thing, but the person in charge, the person who's taking creativity and business and business relationships and getting all of that packaged into content that is distributed to customers in a profitable way, she didn't do that. She didn't really even seem to hold a job with any level of authority or responsibility or importance for five years, much less being able to do all of that for five years. They must have just loved her personality or something. Here's what her boss Enon said when he hired her. And keep in mind, he was on the board of directors of Mattel in 2017. By 2018, he was the CEO. The company had lost a billion dollars. They had had multiple CEOs turning over one after another. He came in and righted the ship. He's an Israeli businessman. He's an athlete. He seems very focused. He's a guy I would bet on. He's also had multiple entertainment industry executive positions. But he picked a bad one here. Quote, Michelle is a powerful creative leader with a wealth of experience working with top studios and creators to make innovative quality content across genres and platforms, said Enon Kreis, chairman and CEO of Mattel. We are excited for her to join at a time of such momentum for the company and for the important role she will play in developing stories that resonate in culture and growing Mattel's global fan base. Mendelovitz moved to Mattel following senior roles at Disney's 20th Century Studios, Apple TV+, Sony Pictures Television, and CBS Television Network. Both the opportunity to connect worldwide audiences with Mattel's iconic brands, franchises, and characters through high-quality storytelling is greater than ever before, said Silverman. That was the boss that she reported directly to, the chief franchise officer. Quote, I look forward to the impact Michelle and Mattel Television Studios will have on expanding the content slate to the delight of our fans around the globe. It sounds like they were pretty enthusiastic about Michelle at the time. While at Disney's 20th Television Studios as Senior Vice President, Head of Drama Development, Mandelovitz managed more than 250 projects in various stages of development and production across all Disney platforms and other streamers including Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Peacock. She was previously a senior creative executive for scripted and unscripted programming at Apple. During her tenure there, Mendelovitz played a leading role in the launch of Apple TV Plus and oversaw various straight-to-series scripted shows and docuseries such as Emmy-nominated Severance. And Severance, coincidentally, is what she's going to be looking for, as well as for All Mankind and the Oprah Winfrey and Prince Harry mental health documentary series, The Me That You Can't See. Head of Drama Development, very creative. Senior Creative Executive for Scripted and Unscripted Programming, also creative. Apple did also lose an absolute fortune trying to launch their TV service. Now they're talking about scaling back. Where's the financial accountability? As Vice President of Scripted Programming for Drama and Comedy at Sony Pictures Television, Mendelovitz oversaw all creative and production needs on numerous series for broadcast networks and streaming platforms, including Bloodline for Netflix and The Good Doctor for ABC. She started her career at CBS Television in comedy development. But where's the accountability for selling these shows into distribution to generate revenue? I'm not seeing any of that here. Mendelovitz added, Mattel is a globally revered brand that I've always admired for its ability to empower and relate to their audience generation after generation. Taking that bold spirit to speak to themes that impact people's worlds while simultaneously entertaining audiences of all ages is what we are focused on as we grow Mattel Television Studios into an inspiring storytelling home for best-in-class creators. I'm so thrilled and honored to join the Mattel team as we take our brands and franchises to a whole new level. A lot of enthusiasm there. Probably a lot of creative ability. Interestingly, you have some people making comments about Michelle when she first got the job as head of Mattel TV. Michelle is amazing. She has passion and vision. Mattel is lucky to have her. 
Another says such a smart move for Mattel. Michelle's a rock star with amazing taste and fights for her talent like no other. So happy to see good things for good people. She's going to kill it. Well, she didn't actually kill it. It's one thing to be able to fight for talent to get their creative vision on a screen. That's fantastic, but you also do actually have to make things that are productive for the company and that are completely on brand. And if you can't do that, you can't stay at the company. And she seems to be someone from how people are commenting about her who has a lot of ideas and who has a lot of good creative relationships. But it's also important that when you're pushing your ideas, you listen to your boss and that your boss likes what your ideas are. There has been a lot of controversy going on over Mattel's He-Man reboot and over their Barney reboot. For example, this is the original Tila from He-Man Masters of the Universe. This is a toy based on Tila. This is what the toy looks like. This is what fans expect, consumers expect. This is on brand for Tila. This is Tila now. Tila looks like a guy. Tila looks like an angry guy. This is not what fans want or expect. This was no doubt in the works before Michelle got to the company, but this is what you're facing when you're dealing with making updates to these classic brands. They're also updating Barney. From Variety, Barney gets makeover as Mattel reboots franchise with new series and films. This is what Mattel was saying about rebooting Barney at the time. And here's the potential trouble. Quote, in creating the new series, it was important to us that we properly reflect the world that kids today live in so that the series can deliver meaningful lessons about navigating it. According to Fred Suley, Senior VP and General Manager of Mattel Television. With our modern take on Barney, we hope to inspire the next generation to listen, care, and dream big. We think that parents, many of whom will fondly remember the original Barney from their own childhoods, will love the show too. They're also throwing away the guy in a costume. And you know you're potentially in trouble when PinkNews.com is excited about the reboot of Barney. Barney the Purple Dinosaur is back, and right-wing trolls are terrified he's gone woke. Toy company Mattel announced that Barney is to be yassified for a 2024 TV reboot, returning in an animated form rather than as a man in a costume. If you're like me, you might not know what they meant by yassified. Yassified is a term that means to make something better, especially more visually appealing. It's often used to describe an internet meme where pictures are edited to look like an exaggerated, hyper-feminine version of a woman. Well, that's not exactly the kind of thing that parents want their children to see when they're looking at children's programming. We don't need a feminized Barney. We don't have all the details yet on why Michelle Mendelovitz needed to be thrown out of Mattel TV. But we do know her boss, Enoch Kreis, turned around Mattel and is a serious business and entertainment executive. He has done serious business before. He does know what he wants, and he does know how to get results. We also know that Michelle did work with Hillary and Chelsea Clinton, and that does give you some insight into her personal and professional ideology. Hollywood can't afford to fool around anymore. They've wasted way too much money trying to push agendas and political ideology in their TV shows and movies. Hollywood is going through a depression right now. Yes, a couple of movies have been hits. But every week, there's another announcement of massive layoffs, whether at Paramount or Disney or Warner Brothers Discovery. It's happening throughout the industry, and people living in LA can't even get the normal work they used to get anymore. Whether it's the fault of the top executives at Mattel, or Michelle Mendelovitz, or Bob Iger, whoever's fault it is, they can't get away anymore with messing around with franchise brands. People expect to see characters that look the way we expect them to see. You can't yassify the MCU and get away with it. You can't do it to the Masters of the Universe either. You can't do it to Barney. They couldn't do it with Pixar. They had to turn Pixar around. All of these studios have to focus on turning things around if they're going to stay in business at all. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. 
give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.